see heaven move. Heaven is moving in this place. I'm really happy to see heaven moving through most of you. And, and I've witnessed it. And I get excited, you know. I asked the Lord, as I did last week, you guys remember, if you were here uh, last week, that the, the message was titled, Ask. Do you remember that? And so how many of you uh, were not just hearers only, but you actually did something about what you heard? Let me see your hands. Did you hear the message last week? Many of you were here for the very first time. We just want to say thank you and welcome uh, to the Rock of the Harbor Equipping Center. Uh, briefly, our vision here that the Lord has given us is that we would be a church uh, for the churches. And you might wonder, well now, why does the church need a church? Well, there's nothing wrong with a church. It's just that there's only so much time in a typical service to be able to convey uh, a message and then move people out so they can come in and the next group can come in and so on and so forth. But what we want this to be a safe environment where people can practice uh, the spiritual gifts and to begin to demonstrate the gifts of the Spirit so that they can begin to see the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and so it's our passion to be a place where people can come and gather that's non-denominational in a neutral building where they can begin to learn and develop and grow in the gifts of the Spirit, all motivated by the love of God. He is interested in taking every single one of us and filling us up to overflowing so that we're literally bursting with heaven. Yesterday, uh, I was down in, in Seattle. Um, I was asked by some friends if I would go uh, treasure hunting in the city of Seattle. Well, I know that uh, the sea fair was going on and the blue angels were flying, and, and I thought, well, it's probably a busy time. But we got jumped on a ferry, and we decided we were just going to follow the Spirit and practice exercising our faith. And so I asked the Lord, which, by the way, is our title for today's gathering, is Ask. And um, we asked the Lord to please call on our steps and show us what he would have us to do. So we jumped on the ferry at the time that we felt the Lord was leading us to get on the ferry. We got over to Seattle and we began to run into people who were hungry and who were desperate for God. I love the story of the, of the wedding feast and I'm not going to turn there now. We'll save that for a later date. But if you think about the wedding feast and the thing that was so amazing is the king wants to have a feast. So he sends out the invitation to all of his friends and what happened? They turned him down. They didn't come. Can you believe it? The king offers you an invitation to come to his celebration that he had ordained and you just say, no, I think I'm going to find something better to do. I mean, how insulting to the king, right? <laughs> and so, I was thinking about this the other day. You guys know the story. What happens? Well, the people he invited didn't come. And he's just like, pooey. I'm not going to mess around with people who do not want to participate in my goodness, in my feast, in my blessing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, all of you, go out in the street to the highways and the byways and find those people who are hurting and broken and who are cast down and bruised and battered and rejected of men and bring them into the house that they can partake of the food of the Spirit. Amen? <laughs> so, so when I was talking to the Lord about this, He was telling me, you know, you, you really need to, to ask. Now, you all heard the scripture that says, you have not because you... Yeah, and so the Lord actually wants us to ask for things. But where we miss His heart is we begin to ask for what we want. Uh, we're working contrary to how He taught us to pray, right? He taught us to pray, our Father, right? Starts with the focus on Him, not us. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's amazing. So he's telling us, this is how I want you to ask according to my will, not thy will. That's cool. If we run around asking for what we want, we would just be motivated by selfish ambition, which was the problem with the Pharisees who knew the law, they knew religion, they even knew how to look good before men, but what they did not know is how to hear and how to obey. Because when Jesus came, he provoked them. And all they wanted to do was get into an endless debate as to who is this man? Who is this man who they call the king of the Jews? I think it's interesting. Uh, yesterday as we got downtown, uh, last year I participated in an outreach evangelism um, musical kind of a, an assembly down there right downtown by the bus stations. Uh, and I remember... 
I remember feeling like, man, there's some oppression over the city of Seattle that I know God wants to lift. And so we, I, I arrived on the scene with a couple friends and we got there and we saw rioters and picketers all around the worship site. And I thought, what in the world? Last year, there was no rioters. There was no picketers. There was some, you know, homeless, broken, hurting people that were kind of gathering around the fringes. But I didn't see anything like this. This was people standing against Israel, God's chosen land. And I'm thinking, they must not know that he's the God of Israel. And that he has his hand on Israel. And if you come against his land, you're coming against his hand. And his hand is really big. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord was showing me how the enemy was trying to interrupt the worshipers. Why would the enemy try to interrupt the worshiper? Why? Yeah, it was warfare. There was a spiritual battle going on in the scene. And I was like, Lord, how do we work against that? Because they're coming against you. And these Muslim folks, and I'm not against Muslims, I'm against the philosophy or the belief system that is anti-Christ. There's a big difference between the sin and the sinner. See, we're meant to love the sinner. Not throw out the sinner because they have a sin in them. Otherwise, we'd all walk away, right? And so the Lord has basically shown me, hey, I want you just to love these people. So I'm walking past these picketers and they're going, rah, rah, rah. And one guy's calling out. He's going, you know, da, 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 da. And the whole crowd of Muslim people with all their picketer signs are going, la, 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 la. And they're over here going, rah, rah. And do you know what he said? He said, ask, which is the title of this sermon. Ask me to release my glory. And so I said, that's it. That's the key. I'm going to ask. And he is going to release his glory. And they're not going to be able to stay here. So I told a few of my friends, we just have to ask God to release his glory. And then he is going to do that because he's partnering with us, partnering with him. Woo. So I said, Lord, I ask for the full release of your glory over this land right now in Jesus' name. You want to revive it. And the enemy is scared. Yes. And guess what happened? Big, giant raindrops like the size of golf balls. I'm not kidding. Began to fall from the sky. We were amazed at how that crowd quickly dispersed. <laughs> you have not because you ask not or because you ask amiss. Amiss is to miss his heart. We don't need to just ask for things randomly like, God, give me something cool so I can feel better about myself. No. He's asking us to ask according to His will. And then His will will be done as we partner with God. You are responsible. That's response-able. He has given us a responsibility. But with that, He has equipped us according to His riches and glory with every spiritual blessing. Right? To move in great power and authority as we ask God. We begin to see those things that are not become as he would have them to be. So turn with me in your Bibles. Turn with me in your Bibles here to Matthew 28, 18. And let's take a look at what the word says here. <laughs> it was so amazing to see the, this Muslim man was debating this Christian man who obviously had written the Word of God on his heart because the words came out by the Holy Spirit. And the thing that he was missing, his battler, who was Muslim, he was missing the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is no battle against the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit moves from the position of empowerment because the battle is won. And if the battle is already won, then you as the inheritors of the kingdom need not fight in vain by believing false things. 
And so what the Lord is saying is, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord, and you shall be in victory, and you shall be in the favor of God. You hear, you obey, you receive. You receive because you believe. You believe because you're in faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith is the shield. How does the enemy gain access to a person whose shield is full from hearing the word of God? He doesn't. He can't gain access to a shield that's full. So what does he do? He goes and finds somebody whose shield is down. Somebody who's downcast, who's discouraged. Someone who's dis. Mantled courage is preventing them from being safe or protected. Let's read what this says. It's not to say that if you're discouraged that you're a bad person. It just means that you need to change your focus. Because discouragement is meant to dis or to remove courage. And if your courage has been removed, it's because you believe the lie. And all you have to do is get encouraged. And maybe one of us can encourage you today. Encouragement meant to put courage in. And when the courage comes in, you become strong and courageous. And then you can battle from your position of authority, from your position of empowerment, and from your position of 